Hey everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're gonna to talk about round trip editing, going from Premiere Pro where we've edited together presumably our little video clip, jumping over into DaVinci Resolve, which is an amazing color grading and pretty good editing application of its own, but much, much better at color grading than Premiere Pro or Speed Grade or any of the, the things that Adobe has to offer. So bringing our entire project over into DaVinci so we can color grade the whole thing and then porting it back over to Premiere Pro where we can finish editing and tweaking it and exporting our final movie, YouTube video, film project, whatever it may be. But the, the importance here is we, we do our rough cut in Premiere Pro where we're most familiar with our editing processes and how we normally edit stuff. And then we can take that exact timeline with all of our clips cut up into every little splice and nook and cranny that they are, seamlessly bring that into DaVinci and then bring it back. That's how it works in theory. Now, as your projects get more and more complicated, um, when you're transferring XML or .AAF files, which is what we're going to do here, um, things can break, things can get complicated. In fact, I've been having a lot of difficulty, with the, particularly with the latest release of DaVinci Resolve and the latest release of Premiere Pro, CC 2017 at the time I'm making this video, and DaVinci Resolve 12.5. Um, it just doesn't want to share XML files, so I'm forced to work with AAF, which is what we're going to do in this tutorial. It's a bunch of jargon that I'm talking right now. We're going to cover it all. So let's take a look at practically how it works and how you can make it work for you. Going Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, back to Premiere Pro with beautifully color graded video clips. Let's check it out. All right, so we're here on Premiere. I've cut together just a simple little thing here uh, for a project I shot a little while ago um, where, we're, you know, just nice cinematic light of this uh, shirt making operation. And it's six little clips here, and we've got them all cut up. But now that we've sort of cut them exactly how we want them to be, we got to bring it over to DaVinci Resolve. Now we do this, and, and by the way, DaVinci Resolve, amazing color grading application, like I said. If you don't know what it is, run a Google search, DaVinci Resolve Lite, L-I-T-E. You can download and use DaVinci Resolve entirely for free. It doesn't watermark your footage, nothing. You get a very, very powerful tool. It's not as fully functioning as DaVinci Resolve. You spend the the right around $1,000, like the $995 or something for the full version. Um, not quite as powerful as that, but there's a ton you can do with even the free version, and it's totally free. It's pretty incredible. DaVinci Resolve Lite by Blackmagic. Amazing stuff. Anyway, to get our timeline out of Premiere Pro, we go File, Export, and export either Final Cut Pro XML, which is what I normally would do, but like I said, they aren't really playing. The Premiere Pro and DaVinci are not allowing XML to work, and I still haven't quite figured it out yet, and it doesn't seem like anybody has. Um, instead, we're going to work with AAF, which is fine. We're going we're gonna to roll with this. We're going to save this file, and what's going to pop up here is the AAF Export Settings dialog box. I'm not going to choose to mix down the video or enable this breakout to mono and worry about audio. I'm not really concerned about audio at all. Remember, we're just doing the color grading here, so it's all about the visuals. This is going to trigger a little bit of an error when we bring this file into DaVinci, but it's like a light error. It's more like just a warning, but it's fine because we don't care about the audio. We don't need the audio. We don't really want the audio. Uh, so we're just going to hit OK here, and it's going to ask us where we'd like to save it. So I'm just going to name it prem-davinci, and I'm saving it in this folder on my desktop, Cine Project Test. And uh, I'm going to save it, and it's going to say I'm simplifying it, saving it, da bang great. Now I'm going to jump over to DaVinci Resolve, and here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to choose New Project, and I'm going to name this, um, I don't know, let's just name it Round Trip, right? Why well, think about this? Go ahead and hit Create. There's Round Trip, and we're going to choose to open this project. And what, what we're going to do here, what we're going to see first is the Media Module. So this is where we're going to import our file. So naturally, we're going to go File, Import. There it is, Import AAF. Now, this is also the feature that we use when this whole XML situation gets sorted out. Uh, this is how you would import the XML. And it's important. I, I'm going to keep ragging on the XML thing because it really is like the fastest, easiest way. And you're going to see DaVinci has specifically an export feature for Premiere Pro. Pro XML. And by the way, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, it's got Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro 10 uh, XML options as well. I don't use Final Cut Pro. I haven't even tested to see if the XML still works between them. Hopefully it does. And if so, hey, you're in for a, a good time. We're going to work with AAF though. And you're going to see it's just there's just a couple little things we need to uh, think about here with AAF. Uh, so there's our file right there, premdavinci.aaf. We're going to double click to open it. It's going to say you're loading this in. There's a source file, great. A timeline name, good. Uh, timeline resolution, 1920, 1080, great at 23.976. As far as our frame rate, perfect. And I'm going to hit OK. You're going to see it's going to take a split second here. Here are these errors that I was telling you were going to happen. Mono audio gain not supported in this release. Playing clips will be imported. It's a yellow error, not a red. So it's kind of just like a uh, 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 kind of error more than just a no, we can't do this. We're going to break. 
Uh, but most importantly, the green here, it's imported our prem hyphen davinci.aaf. That's really what we want. You can see our clips are in here and the prem davinci uh, itself. So we've got our clips here. Uh, and, and it really is four clips that have been split up a number of times. There's 01, 02, 03, 04, and then 04 and 04. So 04 has just been split a few times. So it's really just four clips in total. We're in our editing module now. We don't really need to do any editing to the actual video or positioning. Uh, all of that's being done in Premiere. We don't even want to mess with that stuff. We're concerned with the color module here, and this is all to do with color editing. You can see our, our six little chopped bits come through here, even though they are really four clips. We've cut them up into six pieces. We have our six pieces here. So we're going to do just a, a simple uh, edit here. We have what's called a node up here. I don't really want to get into explaining nodes and going into depth of color uh, correcting here in DaVinci Resolve. There's a ton of amazing tutorials out there already. If you guys are interested in me doing some stuff in DaVinci, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it. I just want to make sure people are going to be interested in it. Um, but there's some incredible stuff you can do in DaVinci Resolve. Anyway, this is what's called a node. We're going to add what's called another serial node by using the hotkey Option S or Alt S on uh, Windows. And this gives us another um, another little sort of layer. You can think of it as a layer, right? If it's stacked on top one of another. If we apply a, an effect up here, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to right-click and choose 3D LUT, a lookup table, and then go to Film Looks and go to the second one here, the D60 Fujifilm. And you can see it really makes it super-duper dark. I don't want that. Well, I did it on its own serial node because we can reduce the opacity of this to allow our original look to sort of shine through, if you will. All I have to do is hit my little key icon here and dial down the gain under key output. So we're going to dial this down uh, maybe to around like 0 0.6 or so. And then if I just hit the little number 2 here, it's going to like cancel out that color grade effect um, and, you know, sort of activate and deactivate it. Um, and the hotkey, I believe it's Shift D. Yeah, Shift D is going to give you a total preview of like what was before and what was after. So we can kind of see that that's cool. Uh, maybe we want to add another serial node here and just apply a little bit of color to this. So we can use, I'm just going to use curves here. I'm going to go to the blue channel specifically and I'm going to pull up on the blues that would come through in the shadows. Um, and then I'm going to pull down up here to add a little yellow to the highlights. It's that very, you know, film sort of blue in the shadows, yellow in the highlights. But it's a very cheesy look uh, because of how we did it here. So I'm going to go back to my composite and I'm going to pull up on the shadows, but then immediately pull down on the shadows just to make sure contrast is infused wherever we're brightening things up. And I'm making the effect a little extreme because, again, we're doing it on its own node because, once more, I want to just dial the effect back. I want to dial it back until it looks good um, and kind of blends with what we had before. Oh, so we can go Shift D. There's before, there's after. So we, we've applied some heavy grading to this, and we can go through and do all kinds of masking and, and blend modes and just insane stuff. But we're not going to get into all that here. We got to make this quick and easy. What we want to do now that we have a style we like to quickly apply it to the other clips, we can just right click on the monitor here and choose Grab Still, and it's going to sort of save this as a preset uh, of sorts over here. We can go to this uh, video clip here. We can right click and choose Apply Grade, and it's going to apply that color grade right to that clip. So we're going to go through our few clips here and just apply this uh, same color grade. Now we could go into any one of these clips and just adjust and tweak it. Like if it's a little bit dark here uh, and we say, yeah, you know what, that's probably a little bit dark. We can go back. I would probably go back to node one. So double click on node one and I would probably just brighten things a little bit here on the curve. And if I do it there on that one, I should probably do it on this one as well. Double click on node one and just brighten things up a little bit. All right, so that's pretty cool. Once we've got all of our color grading kind of figured out and situated, uh, what we want to do, and by the way, that's not paper, that's wood. So I know it looks extra yellow, but it's because there actually is yellow in the wood. Um, once we have all of our color grading sorted out, we're going to come over here to the deliver module. This is where we would deliver back the XML to Premiere Pro, but this is also where things start to break, at least with these latest versions until DaVinci or Adobe, whoever has the issue on their end, sorts it out. So we're working with AF, but you can see up here we have these sort of custom render settings, or hey, YouTube, Vimeo, and here's Final Cut Pro 10 XML, and sure enough, Premiere Pro XML, we can export XML specifically for Premiere Pro. However, this feature just doesn't work right now. Um, I don't know how else to put it, at least with the video projects I've been working on. I have never been able to get this to work. It always, it triggers an error when you try to import the XML file into Premiere. What I use is the Avid AAF uh, option up here. 
First thing I'm going to do is go choose a location where I want to save it. I want to save it right to my desktop. I'm going to hit OK. I'm not saving it within that folder, just straight to my desktop. Uh, export video. I'm just going to use the MXF OP Atom format. It's the only one I have the option for here. Uh, the codec of the DNXHR triple uh, four is what I'm going to go with for my uh, codec. I'm sorry, that was my format I was talking about a second ago. Uh, codec. And everything else is going to remain the same here. So I'm going to render it at the resolution 1920 1080. P uh, pixel aspect, data levels, they all stay the same. Everything else is going to stay the same here. Now I'm going to go over to my audio. I'm going to uncheck export audio. I'm not interested in exporting any audio here. I don't have any audio really that I brought in. I don't need the audio. I just want the visuals. And then we have file options. Use unique file names as checked on. I probably don't need eight digits to be used in the file name. I do only have six little clips that are going to be exported. So I'm just going to say use two digits. So it'll be like 01, 02, 03. Uh, that's great. And everything else can just remain the same there. It's tell me disk space. Great. Um, once I've done all that, what I can do, oh, one of the things you do want to make sure too is that you're rendering the entire timeline. So that's going to be all of our clips here. I'm just going to bring this up, all six of our clips. If we choose in out range, like if we move our playhead to here and we hit the letter O to set an out point, it would just render out these three, uh, these three clips. Obviously, we want our entire timeline. We want all six clips. So once we've done that, we're going to hit add to render queue. It's going to pop the job up here and say, well, when are you ready to, uh, to render it out? Well, we're ready to render it out now. So hit the start render button. It's going to breeze through this. It's usually uh, fairly quick. Um, uh, depending on how fast your computer is and things like that. So we're going to let this rip through it and do its thing, and I'll be back in just a second. Alrighty, great. So it has completed. It's all good. If we jump back over to Premiere, uh, well, we don't have anything in Premiere. we got to go to our Finder, and I'm going to jump back to my desktop. Now, here on my desktop, you can see I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 .mxf clips and a dot AAF file. This is not the one that we brought out of Premiere. Remember, the one we brought out of Premiere, we saved or exported, I sh should say, from Premiere. We saved into the Cine project test folder. That's the one. That's the file that we brought out of Premiere and imported into DaVinci. This is the .aaf we just exported from DaVinci. Now, this file, you want it to be in the same directory or folder as your as your video files that it exported because it needs to be able to reference them. Um, so, ideally, you would really export this to your project folder, which is our Cine project test. But we're not going to mess around with that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Premiere. I'm, I'm in my project bin here. I'm going to right click and choose import. And all I'm going to do is choose to import from my desktop the .aaf file. I'm going to do that and you're going to see here what's going to happen is I get all of this stuff here. Um, I get my, my uh, video clip one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have these these extra audio files, which I can just delete. Uh, yep, get rid of them. I don't care about them. And then I also have this other file here. This is our new uh, Premiere Pro sequence. See, we've got Prem Da Vinci. This is sort of like uh, we can say this one is we'll call it Resolve because it's the one from Resolve. But if I double click this, it's going to open. You can see another uh, timeline. But what we have are our video clips all lined up exactly as they should be. Now, the way I usually do this is just Command or Control X to cut them out of there. Actually, you don't even need to cut it. We can just copy them. Command or Control C to copy them. Close that. Come over here and select those clips, the original clips in your original timeline. Command or Control V to paste them in. And you're going to have the same exact clips, the same exact cuts, everything like that all perfectly color graded based upon the clips that you you uh, color graded in DaVinci Resolve. Now, in order to sort of file manage this over here, uh, what you may want to do is select all of these these files and we could drag them into a little folder. So create a new folder and we could just say like exported, color graded or something like that. And we could drag all of this stuff into that folder just so we know that okay there are color graded clips these are our, our original clips that we had uh, done our initial cut with but here we have newly exported video clips that we got from DaVinci Resolve and they're all perfect everything is perfectly in place just as we edited it this is super important because obviously if you spend all this time creating your edit in Premiere you can just go and color grade it all and bring it right back to Premiere and finish editing. I can add text and you know the company's logo and all that kind of stuff right here in Premiere Pro where I'm more comfortable working. Um, because obviously, like you don't want to go out and shoot 200 clips for whatever film project you're working on and have to color grade everything before you know the feel and the look of your film and – you know, number one, only end up using like 30 clips when you shot 200. So you spend all this time going through DaVinci Resolve, color grading everything, and then exporting everything and having all these files, and then you only end up using 30 of them. Using this workflow, what you can do is edit together and use just the clips you know you're going to use in Premiere, 
bring them over to DaVinci, color grade them, make sure they all work together exactly how you want them to work. You can tweak the color from clip to clip if one needs to be warmed up or cooled down. You can see all that. You can adjust it all in DaVinci Resolve, export it all, bring it back into Premiere Pro where you can finish your editing, put all the final touches on, all that kind of stuff, and boom, export it, and you're good to go. All of the XML fiasco, um, I know it looks bad. It, it really is amazing when it works. It's even it's even easier than the uh, .aaf. Well, I mean, it's about the same, um, but it's just nice because it's like, hey, this is kind of how it's supposed to be, right? But this works great too. Um, so for color grading in DaVinci Resolve and specifically round trip editing, going from Premiere Pro over to DaVinci and back in a way that works. And remember, the bigger the project, more complicated, the more stuff can break and get tricky. And there's some things that XML and that AAF don't really interpolate and interpret and re-disseminate and all that stuff uh, quite as well as you would like. So simplify, 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 color grade, and then bring it back to Premiere and make things nice and complex. Um, but for all of that in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve Lite, which I definitely recommend you go and check out, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Vandal Dodson, Tutvid.com. Catch you in the next one.